Hello and welcome to another episode of Alzoop. Today we're going to start a series on the topic of Internet of Things. It's a new phenomenon and it's growing rapidly. And here to help me understand better what the Internet of Things is, what it's going to do to my life, and what type of headaches I can expect from it, it's my good friend Bill Emmett. Welcome to the series, Bill. Hey, hello, Al. Long time no see. How are you it's doing? Good. I'm, so first of all, very sorry about the Denver Broncos. I know you're uh, you're living in Denver. You're a Bronco fan. I just want to extend my condolences. Better luck, Dick. Well, well, thank you. I am in fact a Denver Broncos fan, and I'm kind of wrapping up my period of mourning right That's now. Great. Well, let's start with a definition. What is the Internet of Things? Well, you know, the Internet of Things and a definition of it, depending on who you talk to, it actually could be a bunch of different things. But there seems to be a few things that I think are, are pretty common threads. The, the first and most basic uh, thread is, simply put, it is, it is things, objects that are connected to the Internet. At the most basic level, that's what people think of as the Internet of Things. But as you start to talk to other people around it, there's, there gets to be a little bit more clarity. So, for example, starting to talk about the seamless integration uh, into the Internet is, is one thread. Another thread is around human interaction with the thing, which uh, then integrates with a service on the back end of the Internet. Now starts to layer on you know, a little bit more meaningful uh, aspects of what is the Internet of Things. So... Computers, refrigerators, these things, what are they? Yeah, so the short answer there is yes. All, all of those things really qualify as the Internet of Things. Uh, and that, by the way, and part of why people have a difficult time really quantifying this is because there is no one specific definition. Uh, there's a little bit of question about what would really truly be an, inter an example of Internet of Things. I like to focus a little bit more of the discussion on things that we historically have not thought about as being internet enabled. It's an object, and now what happens when you internet enable that object and tie it to services and create new experiences and outcomes that you haven't seen before? And that, that's the part of the internet of things I tend to focus most of my uh, energy on. And so why is it so trendy right now? It just popped up out of blue. How come it's surfacing? Yeah, that's a great question about why, why it's so trendy right now. I think several things came together all at about the last same time, really within the last three or four years. And as those things came together, it really became the parents of the Internet of Things. So first of all, it really starts with the cloud. And the reason why is that the cloud is able to scale so much. It can do so much processing for us and it can uh, deliver a service from practically anywhere that you are and actually deliver it in a much simpler way. Another thing that came around that was really important was the idea of mobility. Now, instead of being tethered to the Internet uh, physically in order to do a task, I can have an object really anywhere within uh, that, that can communicate to the Internet, whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it's uh, an LTE uh, wireless signal, that allows me to do things that we haven't done before. And then on top of that is just the simple ubiquity of the Internet. Being able to make that available to a wide range of consumers in ways that's really easy to consume, I think that all those things really came together uh, to, at the same time that really gave rise to the Internet of Things. So how is this going to impact us? Let's start with our private lives. Google just bought that monitoring company that checks the temperature in your house and make sure there's no fires and I think there's uh, protection against uh, robbery and theft as well and that's just the beginning eventually they want to run every appliance in my house uh, and connect it into one single network how's that going to impact me how's my day-to-day -day life going to get better or worse from the private side or the personal side of internet of things yeah, it, it's a great question. I, I think one of the things, you, you know, you mentioned uh, the Nest uh, thermostat and the, and the smoke and seal alarms that they rolled out. And one of the things that I think thought was fascinating is they took a previously unlocked object in your, in your house and they reimagined it. And they said, what can we do if we did that thing differently? 
and, and create a fundamentally different experience for the people that engage it. And that's, and if you think about the experience that the millions of Nest users now have, and the fact that they are a lot more proactive in you know, keeping their house comfortable while reducing their energy, they see a lot of benefits by being able to attach more information and more intelligence into unloved objects. And if you think about thermostats and smoke detectors is two of the things we took most granted for the house. It's very easy to imagine how lots of other things in your house that you took for granted can be reimagined and thought to be much more uh, intelligent and robust and can really do neat things for us without us putting in lots of extra work for its care and feeding. And then we take this and extend it to the workplace. Um, isn't really everything connected at the workplace as it is? Well, uh, in, in some aspects we, we think of our enterprises enterprise workplaces is being connected, but a lot of that's because of our, the fact that our laptops are connected. We know that there's big data centers that sit in the back end, and more and more we work a lot more cognizant that our mobile phones are help and our mobile devices are connecting us. But already in some enterprises, they're already using the Internet of Things in really cool ways. Think about every time when you return a rental car, there is a thing connected to the internet and a network that's allowing somebody, right when you're pulling up to return uh, the car, that, that, that there's a device that's able to do that. And it's not a, a, you know, it's not a PC or the things that we think of. It's a, it's a thing, it's an object that's been built for a very, uh, for a very particular task. Uh, so there's a lot of things that already enterprises are thinking of doing already. In a lot of retail outlets, literally sensors that can monitor empty shelves and start to engage processes on the back end to be able to, to fulfill them. There's a lot of really cool uh, use cases that you can think of that were either done by hand or were just done in a really underloved way that now enterprises can do differently uh, by being able to take a object, often with a sensor, connecting it to the internet, but equally important, connecting it to a service that can intelligently uh, br bring in that information and render information uh, in a way that's useful. Yeah, I'm, I'm not necessarily a futuristic gadget guy, but there are these ski goggles you can get. There's a prototype out, and we'll tell you about snow conditions and ski traffic on the slopes. So rather than guessing where to go, you, it will tell you where there's no one available, where the snow is untouched, where there's not enough uh, um, hassle to get up again. And, and that would really add value to my life, I know, because I don't have limited win windows of skiing uh, and I want to optimize that as much as possible. And I don't see why this wouldn't be too, too hard to make. So it sounds like an exciting thing. Question for you is, all these things... You know, if I could just find ski goggles yes. that don't fog up all the time, I would be good with that. <laughs> It is that too. It is that too. Uh, all these things, all these sensors on the on the ski slopes, the refrigerators in the house, the millions of things at the workplace. Who's going to manage it all? Who's going to make sure they yeah, these well, modes are running okay. properly? It's a really important question because the answer is in terms of is it millions of things and, and the actually and the answer is more it's the billions of things and depending on if you want to read uh, Forrester's most recent research on this or say Frost and Sullivan you'll find numbers between 24 and 50 billion things wow. uh, over the coming years uh, that will be in existence you know a sensor with a network identity con connecting and communicating. Uh, with uh, other points of technology, so we, you know, so really, when we think of this, it's not a matter of millions, but it's truly a matter of billions. So, uh, your question is, uh, so how's the enterprise going to take this on? Yeah, and the reason why I'm asking is because, for example, traditional service desk has a problem managing a thousand PCs and another ten thousand servers. You talk about billions now. This all has to be extremely automated. The human element has to be cut out completely. Pretty much. Uh, are we there yet? Is the technology there? Who's going to jump in and help us with this? Yeah. Well. Well. First of all, I, I think it's it's really going to be an emerging challenge for the enterprise. And what's interesting is, for as much of an explosive growth in these number of things that are out there, there's a lot of enterprise IT organizations that are really taking a wait and see attitude for this. In fact, over 50% of enterprises that were surveyed last year 
in a uh, report that I read by Forrester, actually said that there's no real specific Internet of Things strategy that's uh, you know in the immediate works uh, for IT companies. And uh, there's a number of reasons why they're not moving more quickly. Everything from just a sheer not uh, lack of clarity about the clear use cases for it, as well as concerns about security. All of these things conspire to uh, that that have said enterprises are kind of taking a bit of a wait and see attitude. But I think the Internet of Things actually offers some really important lessons for uh, enterprise IT organizations. So, uh, you know, I'll give you one example. Yeah. If you think about 50 billion things, that is just a crazy number to conceive of. But if you think about the service that's being delivered and you manage more towards what are the critical elements required to deliver the core aspects of the service, I think you have the basis of something that actually becomes a little bit more manageable. So one of the things that I think uh, Internet of Things does is really provides a lot of continued encouragement for enterprise IT organizations around the world to really rationalize their world not as a set of things, but more as a set of services, because that's really why we buy these things and why we care about these things. That's interesting. I think this has a little bit of that ketchup bottle effect that we've seen with other emerging technologies. Most recently, mobility, which was, oh, we have taken a wait and see approach, and then all of a sudden it's almost too late, they completely overrun, and they have to come up with an emergency plan to manage all the mobile devices that enter into enterprises, for example. So it's, it's going to be a very interesting space to, to, to watch. Really appreciate right. really appreciate you jumping in here at the zoo and, and, and giving me a view of it. We should do this more often because I think as the, as the Internet of Things is emerging, uh, we will learn more and we can share more with the audience. All right. That sounds great, Alf. And I hope that I'm back on Alf Zoo uh, before the Broncos uh, start their new season again. You're always welcome here. And to the rest of you out there, take care. Be safe. Bye now.